but as a whole, the marine community, familiar with waves, stood up well against the onslaught. Many butterfly fish, feeding exclusively on living coral polyps, are abundant, a sign that the reef is surviving, heading to recovery. We land in the northern part of Sine Ulu, more severely hit by the earthquake and tsunami. The typical Indonesian hospitality welcomes us. <laughs> Nothing is left from the old Langi village. Like the other coastal villages, it has been wiped out, and what the tremors left standing was destroyed by a wave of more than 40 meters. Fear is still in the eyes of the witnesses talking about the December 26th earthquake, a never-ending rocking movement lasting over four minutes when to remain standing was not possible. People from Sine Ulu remember a similar event back in 1907. After a big earthquake you have to run to climb the hills before the big wave arrives which in the local dialect has been named Sumon. Sumon, Sumon. Jadi kalau mereka sembari itu tidak mengerti. Jadi kalau sudah disebut Sumon, dan itu ayatnya. The strong bond with nature, with this crazy always moving earth crust, saved them. Elsewhere, people ran out on the reef when seeing the sea level retreating shortly before the wave arrived to collect fish and mollusks and thus signing their own death sentences. Sime Ulu people turn their back to the sea, looking for the only possible safe place. Six is the incredible death toll for an island with 7,000 inhabitants, a closest land to the epicenter that claimed more than 300,000 victims in total. The earthquake devastated the reef facing the village, shattering the limestone platform. The rock grown during geological ages by the accumulation of coral skeletons, turning huge ancient colonies upside down. The remaining coral strive to survive in unnatural postures. The returning wave from the land completed the devastation, dragging with it an impressive amount of sand, mud and debris. The mud covered the corals, suffocating them and obscuring the light necessary for the symbiosis with microscopic algae. The turbidity of the small particles killed the coral. The final result 
is the almost total destruction of a biological community. The reef is transformed into a flat, muddy landscape. A very long time is needed before coral growth can resume in this area. The dead corals, fouled with macroalgae, are no longer suitable, even as shelter for small fish. Only few herbivorous fish look for food among them. Even fish have been wiped out by the wave or were killed after the coral's death. We see mainly juveniles, recruits from pelagic larvae that settled after the earthquake. Born into a difficult habitat, desperately holding on to the few living corals, the survival of those young pioneers will define the reef recolonization, the regeneration of a biological community, and also the livelihood of the human communities which are largely reliant on fishery. spectacle awaits us out of the water. the uplifting of the Earth's crust, and the reef flat has been raised one to two meters, depending on the site. Untouched coral fields that were raised out of the water are bleaching under the sun, like a ghost town. Data collection is performed in a dry, unreal scene. Being biologists, scientists of life, we now feel like paleontologists. Petrified hints, modern fossils, help us to figure life on a reef turned within a few moments into an outdoor graveyard. This is a micro-atoll, an important structure to help us determine the sea level before the earthquake lifted up this part of the Earth's crust. It's a structure originating from competition between different organisms. The coral, in this case a porites, is the main building organism. Here you can see many porites, not forming micro-atolls because they were totally submerged. Other competitors include encrusting algae, this white layer covering the dead part of the coral. Considering this difference, we can estimate an uplift of around 1 to 1.10 meters. Crabs, mollusks, animals living under the sea level, beneath a coral canopy, were suddenly raised into the air, died, and are grotesquely dried in the same position they occupied on December 26. Safety was only a few meters away, an impossible trip for those who know nothing about the land. We are on Silaut Kechil Island, the most northerly point of our expedition and the closest point to the epicenter of the earthquake that on December the 26th brought death and destruction throughout the Indian Ocean. Here we can really appreciate the Earth's crust uplifting. We are witnesses of an event normally associated with very long geological times. 
in this case, within a few moments of the earthquake, the crust was raised up two meters. This was the reef front, facing the open sea, the edge of a limestone platform produced by the building activities of corals, whose skeletons were colonized by boring organisms like those vermitids and sponges. You can see the larger holes colonized by sea urchins. They have been dead for two months, but are still in place with their skeletons and the fallen spines. Finally, we're back from an expedition, bringing us face to face with nature's madness in its more destructive aspect. Time to sort the collected data. The earthquake hit the northern part of Sine Ulu Island, lifting and killing the shallow reef. According to our estimate, about a hundred kilometers of coastline have been affected. The marine community, fit to stand the fury of the ocean, recovered well from the first attack of the tsunami. The water flowing back to the sea gave the Coupe de Grèce, burying the coral under a thick layer of mud. The latter effect has been particularly important in coastal areas close to human settlements, where deforestation, mangroves in particular, enhanced soil erosion. Where still in place, plant cover saved the corals, holding back the sediment. Even in Silaut Kechi, a small uninhabited island closest to the epicenter, the smaller corals and many fish survived. Diving to the south in sheltered areas, we again observe signs of reef destruction. Here, probably humans are responsible with actions such as dynamite fishing. The boring sponges in the coral debris grow slowly, thus indicating that this coral was dead well before December 26. After such a destructive event, it can be difficult to separate natural from human damage. We witnessed a unique event, unseen during recent history, that changed the map of a wide area. Where destruction has been total, it will take tens of years to establish a living reef, hundreds to have large colonies of coral. Nature will resume its regeneration, supposing that humans will allow enough time. science are the main ref scientific references you look for information about about science in general and apparently there are some areas which are demonstrating to be very resilient to, to coral bleaching and all the other stress we have okay, these are being identified uh, very recent articles in, in july 2016 right? so all the yellow points are still the good ones, the black points is where actually everything is going bad. We still have 
a lot of hopes around us. Uh, in Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, the corals are still surviving. So it's a good sign. Of course, we cannot afford to keep doing what we are doing until now. So unfortunately, it's not in our hands because it's a very uh, world problem. But there is so, so <coughs> some, some hope left. There is also some active coral reef restoration project. This is a, it's called Bayorok. If you, if you happen to go to Bali, to North Bali, in a, in a small village called Pemutaran, in front of it, there is this Bayorok. It's actually a metallic structure that have been put in the sea and connected with very low voltage on, on the shore. Some aeolic generation or solar panels. So this low voltage, Stimulate the growth of the coral all the time. And it's working very well. It was working very well before the last year, dramatic bleaching in there as well. You can see this big structure and coral actually growing on top of it. It's much faster than the measurable rate. Like this. Yeah, so just I, I finish. Uh, as I, as I say, I don't want to live in a, in, in a world without coral reefs. So there is not much we can do, but reducing our impact in the world is the first thing to do. And uh, talking with people who is not here. Yes, so talking with people here, you know, it's important. Right? But people who now is not here means that most probably they don't know about what's going on. And our life is really linked also to coral reefs. So if you have any questions or something you want to ask, please feel free. Yeah. <laughs> um, coral bleaching is not new, it's been happening for